Peace, love, and light, my beautiful, beautiful Scorpios. Welcome, welcome, welcome to First Eye Visions. My name is Q, and I am here to do your general reading for the Scorpio Collective. I'm so excited to be back. I definitely miss you all. I will you all a bliss. I will everyone is healthy, wealthy, and feeling amazing. It has truly been... Um, it has truly been a very interesting month. As we all know, we are still navigating the Mercury retrograde energy. And for myself, because I can only speak for myself, um, I have really been challenged um, in some positive ways. Uh, communication has come up in some very different ways, yet challenging, but also um They've proven to be effective, like I really needed those experiences in order to level myself up. So I feel like what's happening is we're being challenged by spirit to see if we are in fact who we say we are, who we proclaim we are. Um, you know, communication is something that could always get a little mixed up because you don't really know, you know, what other people are thinking and feeling because you don't feel what they feel. So there could be a lot of instances where things get lost in translation, you know, where people make assumptions or people are presumptuous. So for me, I really was told to, you know, kind of disconnect and disengage from all this external stuff and really balance myself out to get ready for this energy that we are in now you know the the scales are about balance it's about you know really getting yourselves back into equilibrium back into harmony with oneself especially when we are speaking about approaching our solar return that's really what it's about because we're returning back to that you know there's like a light being shined on us to you know to reflect back to us like okay what have you been working on you know the sun is very illuminating it's very revealing and so we are going through this navigating through this energy at this time to confront certain opinions ideologies or belief systems that mean we may have had in the past uh, that's why certain people come back to challenge us to challenge our perspective or our position um, and we have to stand perpendicular in our square in those instances you know what I'm talking about so you're going to be challenged that that energy is going to feel very lethargic and very kind of stagnant because it's almost like you're like damn I went through this already or damn why is this happening it's very laggy but it's just just to make sure you're sure about who you say you are and about where you are journeying where you're d the direction you're going so it's really going to bring that sense of um, clarity you know communication is so that you can have an inner standing you know so that you and another person or you in a circumstance so that there could be an understanding of the circumstances at hand when the communication is off then there's misconceptions there's misinterpretations there's misdirected anger there's you know it's just a lot of misses <laughs> you know what i'm talking about you know what I'm so we do have to be challenged in a way to see if we have in fact learned those lessons and moved on past certain situations or if we're still carrying residual baggage you know still carrying around that energy so for me i was challenged and i was challenged in a way where i had to you know kind of uh you know, I had to go in little hermit mode. You know, I had to really go within during this nine month. This is the time of the hermit. You know, the ninth month is about going into a space where you can introspect, reflect, take self analysis, self inner, you know, self awareness, even gaining a self awareness, I should say. So it's really, um, it's been very beautiful. My father's solar return. My Baba Yaya, who has since transitioned, his solar return was yesterday at the beginning of the month. My uncle transitioned in the very beginning of this month as well, a few years ago. So this is a very like, for me, it's it's really about um, finding a sense of grounding, you know, um, really connecting, being in alignment with myself, mind, body and soul. So I can't be present for you if I'm not 
present for myself first. So that's why I had to take that little moment, you know, to to uh, to uh, meditate, to get some things straight within my own life, because I'm not just here reading cards. I'm on this journey with you all. You know, we are all on this journey together. And as I learn things, I could pass on what I've learned and maybe you all could apply it and utilize it to your benefit, to your ability. But um, I'm doing my work. You know, this is called proactivity, beloveds, but I digress. But I will. All of you are bliss, feeling well. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a deep dive. You know how I do spend a little minute. So I feel very giving. I have a bonus reading for you all as well, because I did record um, a, a reading about it. Was, I believe it was sometime last week. Um, not really sure of the date, but it is a bonus reading because I do want to get that message out because I feel like it was very, uh, it would resonate with some of you all. I felt like it was a message that needed to be out there. So I'm a, I'm a let that out the chamber. Um, in addition to this reading, because I love y'all, you know, and I missed y'all. And I know a lot of you all look forward to receiving these messages, these little confirmations and, you know, and downloads and transmissions. So I don't ever wish to uh, disappoint. Um, but, you know, like I said, self-love is the best love. I got to take care of me first. I am my priority. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So uh, we're going to take a deep dive. But today we're going to do some things a little different. Uh, because I've received a lot of downloads during my time away. And so there's going to be a little adjustments here and there on the channel and the way in which I may channel messages and, and, and provide you all your readings. Um, and today I felt very inspired and I also felt directed to do a sound bath before we even delve into the reading, before we even touch the cards, beloved. We're going to go ahead and do a sound bath. I'm going to use two instruments today. We're going to switch it up every now and then. One day I might use my djembe drum. Another day I might use the flute. Another day I might use a tongue drum, singing bowl, etc., etc. Um, but we're going to start implementing these instruments because these instruments are truly um, the way to to change the frequency you know, to change the energy, to to heighten, to amplify the frequency. Um, and I feel it will also positively uh, impact and affect the reading as well. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I just feel like some of y'all need to like, y'all need this. Y'all need a little bit of a little sound therapy right now, you know, to get you back on point, get you back on on, on your square, you know what I'm talking about? So before we do that, I do want to say for anyone who may be new, first and foremost, welcome, beloved, to First Eye Visions. I appreciate you tuning and tapping in to the channel. I will that a message resonates for you. Um, if you all find that the messages resonate, please, please be kind. Like, pay it forward, hit the like button. That is a great way for other people to discover the reading, to get the message that could very well be meant for them as well. Um, I don't ask for donations. I don't ask for anything other than your like. That's the way you can reciprocate the gesture and show that gesture of love. Rotate that gesture of love. I'm taking uh, valuable time. Time is currency as of lately. We all know that. Nowadays, time is currency. So let's not play with that. My time is very valuable to me and you all are very valuable to me so the way that you could show love to a sister who takes time to give you a clear and concise message and reading I'm not microwaving nothing for you I'm not speeding it up I'm giving you the messages as they need to be given uh, hit the like button show the love show the gratitude you know what I'm talking about like most I sees all my mama I sees all don't be a, a parasite don't be parasitic don't come around leeching around don't be a fly on the wall like engage you know what I'm talking about this is a reciprocal gesture I do the readings for you you can hit the like button for me that is the way you can show love to assist Ashe so please be kind and do that um so for anyone that may be doing a new again my readings are general so my spiel is eat the fish spit out the bones if it doesn't apply let it fly by Know that you're more than just your sun sign. Check your moon, check your rising, your Venus, Mercury, Mars. Your, check your other placements. Check even your north node. Check your other placements so you can have a clear understanding of you, of who you are, of 
the way that you are, um, the way you are triggered, you know what I'm saying? Or the way you flourish, you know, the way you may respond, the way you may react in certain circumstances, situations, or with certain individuals. So it's very important because that, that natal chart gives you truly a breakdown of you you know, astrologically, astronomically. So, you know, it's like someone had literally just sat down and, and wrote your story, but this is, this is your story astronomically. So you might want to take a peeky peek at that. You know, it's very important nowadays to start applying many, um, uh, layers of knowledge, you know, start, start learning more about yourself, about this life, you know, about yourself as above, so below, as within, so without, you know what I'm talking about? So just just know that there is a connection. There is, absolutely. And you'll find a link in the description box below if you do wish to um, pull up your natal chart. Your natal chart, uh, they will need your, your name, of course, the place you were born, uh, city and state, and also the time. So it is to get a, an efficient uh, natal chart reading, you need your exact time of birth. Um, if you don't know that, if you can't get that from like your mother, your father, grandmother, or a family member or someone that knows, then they say you just use the uh, 12 o'clock p.m. as the um, default time and it'll still uh, generate, you know, a message for you. Uh, but a clear and concise natal chart reading will need your exact time of birth, exact place of birth, Ashe. So, and use the name that you were giving at birth. So if you changed your name or if when you was three years old, your mother decided to change it from E-A-N to C-H-A-N, then, you know, meaning a, the, the spelling in your name is, for instance, if for an example, then you would have to use the exact name you were at the time of your birth. What was on your birth certificate at the time of your birth? Who were you referred to? So that's what they need. Also, my readings are timeless, so whenever you find yourselves clicking on this reading, whenever the messages started popping up in your feed, that was the divine timing. That's divine order. Ashe. So let's go ahead, take a deep dive. And exhale. I do call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether and spirit ashe i ask our beautiful angels archangels ancestors ascended masters spirit guides deities animal totems earth mother gaia universe source the divine to shine a powerful powerful message of love and of light for our beautiful scorpios i ask that you help me to pick up on the energy number synchronicity and vibrations of my cards i call personally upon baba obatala Mama Oya and Baba Ogun to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards and to also guide this reading. And so it is, so mo it be. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So before we even start the reading, as I said, I would love to bathe you all with a beautiful sound bath. So we're going to go ahead and start off with some sound bath therapy.
Ah, Shay. Thank you, Spirit. That was beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Spirit. Ah, Shay, ah, Shay, ah, Shay. And next, we are going to use, beloveds. We are going to use my singing bowl. Ah, Shay. So, let me get this for you. I'm going to do a deep dive, as I said. So, all right. So, let me get my singing bowl centered. So as I said, we're going to start utilizing these instruments that I have around. I do sound bath therapy for myself, for my children. Whenever my mom comes by, I'd be sure to do that for her as well. Uh, so I'm going to start doing that, you know, before we open up the readings, because it's very important to get the energy back into alignment, you know, to really uh, heighten the frequency, the vibration. So this is a very beautiful way to uh, start the reading. So let's go ahead for all you beautiful souls out there who've been waiting for a reading. I appreciate your patience and your unconditional love. A lot of people don't know what unconditional love is. Love is not conditional, meaning it should not feel like a freaking transaction, beloved. It, love it should just flow because that's just who you are. That's just what you give, beloved, and I appreciate that. So I really, um, I appreciate all of you lovely, lovely souls that have been very uh, persistent and consistent, genuine, very authentic, you know, really checking in with a sister, seeing how I'm doing sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Shoot with me an email, be like, yo, what up? What's good? How you doing? You know what I'm saying? How's the family? I love that. That's soul family vibes. I love it. I am not like just a figure in the phone. You know what I'm talking about? I'm a real, real person. Real heartbeat, real things going on. And I know you all are. That's why I honor you and uh, give you all, you know, some very thorough readings opposed to just throwing some ish together. You know what I'm talking about? So we have environment here on the bottom of the uh, numerology deck. And it is 1818 on the clock. So that is 99. What was I saying about hermit mode? So a lot of you all have been in hermit mode as well some of you all have been directed to go within as well to unplug as well to disconnect from the nonsense as well nine is a number of reflection nine is like you going within for the answers because nothing external is going to give it to you it ain't going to hit the same as if you sat with yourself and meditated and received that download from spirit ashe so that nine is telling me like you all are definitely in hermit mode, but that hermit is about to come up out of his cave, out of her cave, out of that comfort zone. And they're about to have some sort of new voyage, take some new voyage, start some new beginnings, some new uh, venture. This 44, eight, this eight is telling me like I'm getting an energy. First and foremost, whenever I see double numbers, if you are new here, for those who have been here before, you already know. The way I interpret double numbers is that you're matching the vibration frequency of a, count, a divine counterpart, a cosmic companion. Y'all are both in your heart space, in your heart chakra. So that speaks to growing. This green deals with the heart chakra. The number four is the heart chakra. The four is also the divine masculine, the emperor. You know, the four is really about, you know, taking some sort of... Um, taking some sort of stance or effort or action to grow, to heal, to mature, to become emotionally intelligent. I feel love, self-love. I feel self-confidence. I feel a sense of um, even nurturing, 
nurturing oneself, healing, definite energy of healing thyself. And when you heal thyself, you begin to love thyself. And when you love thyself, you then know thyself. So it's very important when you start taking those steps to heal uh, because it does help you to learn to love again. And I feel like you and someone else may have had to learn to love thyselves. Maybe you were in relationships or in friendships or in work dynamics or in connections where there was a one-sided transaction. It was non-reciprocal. And I just realized my music isn't playing because I just did the sound bath. So let me go ahead because you know, or for those who don't know, I am... Uh, also clairaudience, so I do incorporate like music into my readings. And the way that works out is the messages in the song, whether the lyrics or the name of the song, name of the artist, even the time stamp of the song, it will correlate with what I'm channeling intuitively as well as what's showing up on the card. So I do things a little differently on my side of the planet and the downloads come through as they do and, you know, they re tend to resonate. So, um... But as I was saying about this number four, this this is about self-love. You know, you know, the, the, this is really an energy of, you know, you really knowing that love is an inside job. You got to first love yourself before you can, you can ever extend love. And so I feel like may, many of you could have been in relationships 21, 21. That's three, three. Um, I saw 21, 21 as I was building and in my mind that so that three, three is six. So there's definitely a past relationship, a past connection. The six is the lovers. Six is also the first die. So maybe you have been, um, you know, picking up on someone's energy intuitively. Maybe someone has been thinking about you a lot. Maybe there's been some sort of, you know, dream activity. We know six is also the six of cups that tends to deal with someone from your past. We're dealing with Mercury retrograde. So people from your past could have resurfaced. Uh, you may have heard from someone from your past. Maybe someone from your past wants to reach out. Maybe they will reach out um, before the end of the month, maybe next month, maybe in six days, six weeks, uh, you know, in six months, uh, I feel strongly like there is this sense of, um, you know, like there is this sense of someone returning from the past, uh, someone that you have not heard from because you've been in hermit mode. Maybe this has been also the experience this other person has been in working on themselves because both of you are mirroring one another with this four, you know, and that 44 reduces to eight. So they could possibly be mustering up the strength to come back. This is someone I feel you're familiar with because we have environment. So this just speaks to like, you know, there are some 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 sort of roots. There is some history. I feel like there's a connection pre-existent. Maybe you've met this person at your job um, or at a job you worked or at um, in your in, in your environment, maybe a local grocery store, maybe in an outside setting, maybe at the local gym, maybe at the farmer's market, um, maybe in a parking lot, maybe at a park, maybe on a walk on a trail. Um, I just feel like there was outsides. I'm seeing trees because this green is just making me feel like it's an outside setting out in, in mama, you know, mother earth, uh, you know, daughter earth, mother Gaia energy, you know, vibes, maybe even on a beach, maybe at a lake. Uh, but I just get a strong sense of an outside setting, someone that you know already. And with that 2121 that I saw that I was breaking down, that reduces to 33, three, which is six. And that six, uh, again, is, you know, I'm feeling like this is someone who could be in, in you know, heavy thought. You know, they're having a lot of thoughts about you, thinking of you, memories, memories of you, memories of love. Um, this is someone that you have history with, obviously. Uh, as I said, this could have been someone you worked with, someone you may have dated at work, someone you may have um, lived in the same neighborhood, same building. Uh, but there's there's something pertaining to uh, the environment that, that you two are familiar with one another, cross paths um, in a particular environment. But with this 44, that also reduces to eight. I was picking up someone trying to muster up the strength to reapproach you. Uh, someone now who's more confident because that four, like I said, is the emperor. The emperor is very confident. He goes after what he wants. He knows what he wants. He knows his worth value. He's very, very, uh, very confident, very strong, very assertive. He's like that, that tie, the, uh, that lion, pardon me. Um, so he's a leader, you know. Um, so I'm picking up on somebody really gaining some sort of confidence after taking the time out to really assess themselves, um, observe certain behaviors of theirs and, and make the decision, the decision to change, uh, for the better, to transform. So there's some sort of, uh, 
startling metamorphosis that someone has gone through a transformation of thought transformation it's like a death of the old and the birth the rebirth um of the new you know someone emerging someone completely different um but they may also see you as a wish fulfillment this could be someone that's a wish fulfillment for you someone that could have been prayed for someone that has, uh, has there's been a lot of prayers and petitions a lot of of written um petitions you know written down journals asking for specific uh characteristics attributes and this person is coming in um this is definitely someone that i feel that sees you as a star sees you as someone that's in the spotlight so maybe you have some level of success if you have social media maybe you've been posting some you know some information online about maybe a business that you've started and they're starting to see that you're gaining traction a lot of people are coming and patronizing perusing your online shop or perusing um your beauty bar or perusing your clothing line and and they're starting to see that like wow you're, you're gaining traction there's a lot of a lot of attention you're in the spotlight people love your products you're getting rave reviews it's not like you just threw some ish together and it's like barely done you know um it's like this person is admiring you from a distance. It's like you're almost like an inspiration. You're someone that they are seeing you in a whole new light. You know what I'm talking about? So they see you as a star. You know, you've managed to like turn your vulnerabilities into a superpower. I feel like this person is heavy in their head as well. Uh, a lot of thoughts, as I said, so that could be like analysis paralysis, constantly thinking, 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 but not really doing anything, not taking action um, to change the circumstance. You don't know if, if something's going to work out or if somebody's going to feel a certain way unless you open up the lines of communication. That's what I was picking up earlier, like communication during this time could be a little, it could be a little, you know, a little iffy, a little funky, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's why I just feel like many of you could have been in that hermit mode just so you wouldn't have those instances where there was miscommunication or arguments or potential conflicts. Um, but whoever this is, they see you as a star. This is someone that sees you as very beautiful, um, someone who loves themselves, someone who has has been co-creating with source, someone who's in tune, tapped in. Um, they love your spirit, your energy, uh, very optimistic, you know, very positive, uh, just a radiant light. And we have on the, what did I say? I can't make this up. Look at that. The 35 communication, didn't I say communication at this time? And we are dealing with this Mercury retrograde. So, I mean, I said 35, that's 33, pardon me. So, 3-3. Three, three. And when I broke down the 21-21, I failed to mention that that 2 was a mirrored number. So, both of you are in that 3. That 3 is really an energy of, you know... Um, it's the Trinity. It's the number of the Trinity, mind, body, soul, man, woman, child. So this could be someone that is, uh, you know, in that divine feminine energy now, because we first saw, you know, the uh, divine masculine with this four, four. So that 21, 21 breaks down to three, three. So both of you are now balanced in 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 who you are because now you're you're coming in to match one another's fly one another's vibration one another's frequency um that empress is going to match that empress vibe that empress vibe is going to match that empress's vibe and so you both are coming in with that same energy that's why i was picking up like the four that that's emotional intelligence that's a very strong stable um you know stance like you know who you are you have that confidence within yourself but with this 33 now that also you know again six this person is perhaps communicating with you telepathically because of their heavy thoughts, because they're thinking of you so much. You could be picking up on them energetically uh, because this energy is 7-7. Seven, seven. 33 and 44 is 7-7. Seven, 7-7 seven. Seven, seven reduces to 14. That's 5. Communication. This person is eventually going to break out of just thinking of you and dreaming of you and daydreaming and having all of these uh, nostalgic memories circulating their mind. They're going to eventually speak to you. They're going to eventually say something because they have some sort of epiphany. This is a moment of clarity. This yellow card is speaking to, again, the mustering up the strength. My right ear is ringing loudly. My right ear is ringing loudly. So usually when the right ear rings, um, that means spirit is communicating with you. 
your angels, your ancestors, your spirit guides. And there's a strong energetic connection. Someone that you have a very strong energetic connection. So this is like, to me, I'm hearing automatically like it's my, my spirit team, my angels. I also feel like this is saying even for myself that someone could be um, coming in with some sort of communication for me as well because I too am a Scorpio. But with this 33, there's definitely like someone is finally going to use discernment how to handle a situation because this person does feel very strongly about you they feel this strong chemistry connectivity um, they feel this synergy with you this is someone that definitely feels you're very grounded balanced and in alignment and more importantly that you ground them you know you make them happy also I'm hearing you make them happy when skies are gray. I don't know why I'm hearing that, but that's what I just heard loud as hell in my mind's eye. So this person feels happiest around you. This is someone that feels that you bring them happiness. I feel this person will admit this to you because this 33, maybe this is how they feel they could get through to you is just by being open and honest because they was like hiding these things. 34, 34 is 7-7 seven, seven again, like I said. So again, that's mirroring one another. So you both are very in tune, very tapped in, psychic, very clairvoyant, very in tune with one another as well. I feel this is a spiritual partnership, a spiritual connection, because seven deals with the crown chakra. This person wants to rush in because they have found balance within themselves. And this time around, there's no more fears. They're going to be very assertive. They're going to be very confident in the way that they come to you because that seven is the chariot in traditional tarot, the major arcana seven. So that could be a cancer that you have coming towards you, another water sign, or this is just someone coming in, rushing in that, that really wants to set the record straight, really wants to tell you something, you know, in regards to what they've been holding back and hiding. So let's see what we got coming in, going out, going on for my beautiful Scorpio spirit. May I have a message of love and light. I cleansed my cards with my uh, dragon's blood dipped sage. I also sell that on my shop. That is very powerful sage combination. And I use real dragon's blood resin so it's like when you burn it like it it you know it can stick you know because it's a real resin you know and the way that I do it is I I um I um mix it up my special way because I love the way that natural dragon's blood smells in connection I don't use like the gum that they be telling you to use um because I feel like it changes the texture of uh, the sage, the sage becomes like, you know, just a little uh, hard, hardened. But I digress. I'm talking to you about dragon's blood <laughs> tipped sage. But I was just talking about it. my cards, how smooth they're, you know, they're cutting. It just, you know, as I am shuffling them, I can feel how easy the shuffle is. But I digress. Let's go ahead. All right, bottom of the deck, overall energy. And we have patience, beloved. Good things take time to create. Patience is also a form of action. So I definitely feel like divine timing is of order. I definitely feel this is also about someone focusing on self-love, self-care. Two is the number of duality. So this is about finding balance within oneself. You have masculine property, feminine property, masculine energy, feminine energy. So you have to be in harmony with oneself first. That's why patience is always, you know, of essence. But because this is a solid orange card, I strongly feel that you all know it's important to be patient because you have to make sure you're ready you know what I'm saying? For whatever it is that is to come in, you want to be make you want to make sure you have a, a, um, a positive start. So this too deals with the high priestess as well. So this is about being very in tune, you know, knowing what's hidden, knowing that there's un underlying situations that are taking place. That's why it's calling for you to be patient. You know, patience, as I just said, is a form of action. And so you have to uh, know how to conduct yourself in those moments where something may not be happening when you feel it should be. But with this patience, I feel strongly divine timing is of essence. 
The second chakra deals with self-love, self-care, self-worth. Moving to the beat of your own drum. So I do feel like there's, you know, someone's really wanting to make sure that they make their next move their best move. They're not going to just rush out there. They're not just going to, you know, make rash decisions as they may have in the past. This is about analyzing everything. You know, the two is about not also being confused or conflicted, making a wise choice, a wise decision. So this is looking at things from a bird's eye view, from a different perspective. You know, somebody could possibly be trying to uh, make a decision and they're making, you know, taking their time to get it right. We got 41 discipline on the bottom of the deck. So definitely there's been some sort of growth, growing, learning. This is studentship. This is like, for me, whenever I see the 41, I automatically think of like the Hierophant. You know, the Hierophant is a master teacher. The Hierophant is, you know, he is the uh, masculine version of the high priestess. So this again is speaking to you and, you know, your divine counterpart you know, kind of mirroring one another in, in, in even in this instance where you're reflecting, you're still learning and growing. You're obviously reflecting and meditating and contemplating to gain a, a, a understanding of a circumstance or to feel um, grounded, at ease, aligned. So this is also work. This is also doing the work. This 41, self-discipline. This is also teaching. This 41 is when you're sitting at the feet of that elder and they're teaching you, they're chastising you, schooling you. They're giving you those seeds, those fruits of knowledge, planting those seeds so that you could see things from, you know, a more uh, evolved perspective, from a learned person, someone who has experienced the things you're now learning. This could be going to a master teacher, to a shaman, a healer, a light worker, to a tower reader, to an elder in the family, a matriarch or a patriarch of your family, to that uncle who was married or that auntie who was married for like 30, 40 years and they still have fun, go out, go on, you know, on freaking international trips they own homes. They have laughter and success and love and their children are thriving. Like that that successful family, that's who you sitting at the feet, getting soaking up the knowledge from them. That's what this person is doing. I feel like if that's that, this person, this is you. And this is where they're also learning to love themselves. That's the first step. The root cause of any problem has to first be addressed before you can ascend, grow, evolve, or even heal, man. Got to start at the root cause. So for you to start at the root cause, that means you got to take a trip down memory lane in certain circumstances. Whenever you go sit down at a therapist's office, if you go to a regular doctor's office, guess what they're going to do? They're going to ask about your history so that they know how to deal with you, so that they know what, you know, the, the, the root cause, you know. And so that's what you have to do in order to become self-disciplined. You have to, like, assess oneself. And that's what this hermit mode time is about. That's what the this nine time is about the change, the positive change. Nine is the highest number of change. And so that's that the, the evolution of the self. But someone is learning, someone is growing. This is about self discipline. So this is a lot of, you know, internal work, healing. This is even taking onus, accountability, responsibility. This is really about, you know, self-respect as well. So let's see what's coming in, going out, going on for my beautiful Scorpios. May I have a message of love and light? What's coming in? So this is the overall energy is patience. You've been very patient. But I also feel like you know, you can sense in that high priestess energy, that high priest energy that something's coming. Something that you've been patiently waiting for is, I'm hearing it's arrived. Wow, look at all these cards. So I'm, uh, I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to expound. Let me see what's going on. What's on the bottom of the deck? We got relationship change. 
So there's some changes. Number 56 reduces to 11. 11 is, um, deals with like a cosmic companion, twin flame, soulmate. This is like the yang to your yin, yin to your yang. So the cards that flipped downward, I'm being called to these. These are expounds. So I'm going to see what these are. So we have abundance, number 88. Powerful. And I'm just going to pull them all out and then we'll build on them. We have number 7, 71 health so that's 888 71 breaks down to 8 that's why I said that we have number 9 completion we have number 96 forgiveness Ashe. and these are all expounds so we're going to expound and then we're going to go ahead and proceed with uh, the reading I'll break those down so with this relationship change I feel if some of you all have been single, you're not going to be for very much longer. I feel like that's why this patience card is here because 56 reduces to 11. I know it's a master number, but in this instance, the way that I'm reading, the way that the cards are, you know, reading to me, I should say, um, is that's the reason why that two is there. I feel you know something is about to change. Someone is about to communicate something to you. Look what's on the bottom of this deck. This is the cards that are on the bottom of the deck. You're coming into a spiritual partnership with someone, Scorpios. This is not just any old type of someone. This is someone that spirit has handpicked for you. This is a cosmic companion. This is a twin flame. This is someone, because we've been seeing a lot of synchronized numbers, a lot of, you know, dual numbers, and we have it here in this pile as well, the number 77. And remember, I was t breaking down that 3434 three, because we had 33 communication and 44 environment. And I was saying 3434. Three, well, that 3434 three, four was 77, seven, and there goes the 77 seven, spirituality. But look what's hiding behind that spirituality card spiritual partnership. So in the very beginning, I picked up on 212116. Because the time stamp said 2121. As six deals with six of cups, someone from your past. Six, lovers. This is a divine counterpart. The lovers is overseen by an angel. The angel is overseeing that union because there is something very special about it. It is a spiritual union, a spiritual bond. I feel that is the reason why there has been this time apart. Because some, both of you, I feel you and your cosmic companion have had to heal from the past the 4-4 environment card is about healing the heart chakra so there were matters of the heart where you all were heart broken and you had to learn what love truly was because you were not in loving relationships you were in codependent relationships some of you all were healing from childhood traumas from familial traumas so that was the first step Learning emotional intelligence, learning your love language. That's why the 4-4 environment was the first card that showed up. You had to heal from something that broke your heart. Not only was it you, but it was whomever you are attracting to you. Because remember what I said, when I see double numbers, I feel you and that divine counterpart are mirroring one another. You're in the same vibration and energy. So you both are healing at the same time. That way, when you do come into union, when you do come back into union with one another, you're both going to be on the same frequency and vibration. That's why patience is a virtue, because this is what's teaching you to apply the tools necessary to heal thyself. And as you heal thyself, with that number four, you learn to love thyself. And as you learn to love thyself, you begin to know thyself. You realize, I'm an alchemist. I'm a magi. I can set intention. I can transmute energy. I'm a conduit of change. I'm a divine feminine. I'm a divine masculine. I'm a co-creator with source. That's when you start to know thyself. And so you start to manifest and you start to call in what you want, speak what you want into existence. With this relationship change, I feel like you're coming into union with your divine counterpart. I just saw 4422. So that's still 4444. Spirit gave a nod of approval for that message. This spirit was like, I approve that message. 56, 11, that's the number of twin flame of one half of it. That still is two, you know. So this is the person and you are mirroring one another, being patient. Four, 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 four. So that four, four, four is 16 at seven. You know this already. Spirit is giving you the divine downloads. This is the divine intervention right now. This is 
a confirmation that your person is coming in. There's going to be a change. You're going to end up in a very powerful spiritual connection with someone that you have chemistry with. I was picking up again with that 4-4 environment card that there was already roots, seeds, history. There was some pre-existing connection. This is not just some new person. You know, this could be a past life love, but when you meet this person, this will be someone that you feel like you knew them a whole lifetime. If you already know this person, you knew that the first time you met them. This is the one that got away. This is the one in your mind that you're thinking of like, dang, you always think about that person or vice versa. They're always thinking of you. You have a connection where the timing wasn't right. You both came into, um, it was almost like it was premature. It wasn't ready. It still need a little more time to cook. You know, there was still some work that needed to be done. But this is, a, in fact, a spiritual partnership. With that 27-9, I feel like both of you have been in that hermit mode, just like I said. You know, we're in the ninth month. So I do feel like absolutely today is the 27th. So some of you all may hear from someone today. They may communicate with you. With this spirituality, I absolutely feel that you all may be having some heavy dream activity, lucid dreams. Someone may be like, remote viewing you, astral projecting and viewing you, watching you, spying on you. This is like a secret admirer, but this is also someone that dreams about you a lot, thinks about you a lot, wants to communicate. There's a very strong spiritual bond and connection here. It's no doubt about it. And this is absolutely going to end very happily. There's going to be a happily ever after or a happy ever after. This is someone that's going to bring you joy. Someone who's going to bring you happiness and joy because they see you as someone very beautiful. 93 reduces to 12. That's three. That's the empress. So this person is very, very fond of you. They find you to be very beautiful, very attractive, very nurturing, very majestic, very kind, very loving, very just very domestic, even maternal. If you're masculine, very paternal, very protective, you know very protective of your family you're a provider you're resourceful you're practical you know but this happy ending is definitely telling me like this person is aware that they're not going to be happy unless they are with you this is someone that knows that this is the epiphany this is almost like they're having some sort of grand epiphany this yellow card is just like the sun it's like the sun shining so it's like illumination clarity an aha moment for someone Wow. And I feel like the connection that you have with this person, this is another 11, is just a la natural. It's a very natural connection. When you met this person, it was just like, it was so effortless. It was so seamless. Like it was, it just like y'all knew each other. Y'all just fell in line. Like it was like the conversation just flowed. It was like one little small conversation turned into an hour, two hour conversation. And not just that, it didn't end there. Y'all exchange numbers and y'all would have deep and stimulating conversations over the phone. Y'all would sometimes, you know, rise with the sun, you know. Y'all would, would, would be on the phone when the sun was rising. Or maybe y'all was on the phone until the sun set, you know. But there was just this, this energy of like, you know, uh, looking forward to your conversation, you know, appreciating your conversation, appreciating your dialogue, appreciating, you know, the laughter, even your wise dome, your experience, your perspective. You know what I'm talking about? So we have, these are the cards I said I was going to expound. So we got four perseverance. So this is absolutely showing that there's been a lot of difficulty um, that you've healed from. You know, another all green card mirroring that 4-4 uh, um, environment card. So you've persevered through a lot. And that's how you've grown. It's like you grew through things. You didn't go through it. You didn't become a victim of your circumstance. You you grew through it. You were resilient. You know, you, you persevered. You defied the odds. You know, you stood your ground. I feel like you even like rebuilt whatever was destroyed. You you really rebuilt, you know, you, you rebuilt what was destroyed. So that that's like, you know, a very... Um, persistent and, 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 and very uh, diligent type of energy. It's warrior spirit right there. It's like, yeah, you can knock me down a hundred times. I'm going to get back up 101. Talk about it. Talk to me. You know what I'm talking about? Like that's that type of energy. Very strong, stable, standing your ground, firm belief system, you know, not backing down from nothing. 
because of the love of self, because of the love you have for yourself, because of your emotional intelligence. You've grown to do this. That time out you took was very valuable to you. It helped you to discover, you know, the changes you had to make within yourself and to also emote more, express yourself more, speak up more, stand your ground. You know, that time out re revealed a lot, maybe for you or for the person you're attracting. But I see that there's, again, just this just this this clarity that comes into um, fruition for someone. Someone just sees something for the first time ever. You know, this 37 is also like somebody taking the time out to clear their mind, to clear their thoughts or to get their thoughts right. You know, maybe there was a lot of, of distractions, a lot of external opinions and people and all this other mess in, in your ear and, and it was causing confusion. But this is showing like you've you've grown from that. Learn to trust your intuition and trust you know, use discernment opposed to listening to other people's nonsense. With the 78 spiritual career, this message has come out so many times for Scorpio. I absolutely believe like some of you all are absolutely ordained and anointed, you know, spiritual practitioners. Like some of y'all are shamans. Some of y'all are healers. Some of y'all are light workers. Like there's no doubt about it because spiritual career comes out so much. For you all that it's not even funny. I barely get it, you know, when I'm doing other readings. But this is like, this card is very powerful because it's saying that you have some psychic ability. That 78 reduces to 15, which is 6. So it says that, you like, your, your, your intuition, your first eye is sharp. Like, it's wide open, beloved. It's wide open. So some of you all are channelers. Some of you all are scryers, even. Psychics. Clara sentient clear audience and you 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 can you know maybe you already i was about to say you can have a very successful career um just doing what you are called to do like this is a part of your soul's mission like your path your purpose maybe taking a time out revealed that truth because this five and this six reduces to 11 that's two that's still the high priestess some of you all are definitely practitioners in this, in 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 the um in the spiritual realm like y'all are seers i'm hearing some of you all are seers we got new beginnings here so brand new beginnings every ending denotes a new beginning so you've just completed a cycle you said i'm not repeating ish i'm finishing this shit so this one is showing a very powerful movement forward and i did pick up on that with that nine the hermit, you know, once you're in that hermit mode where you're doing a lot of internal self audits and reflecting on things from the past, looking back in awareness, it's like once you come out of that space of, of reflection and introspection, you're obviously going to come out of it, out of that cave and, 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 and embark on this brand new beginning, this brand new voyage, this new venture. And that's what this is. It's a passionate new start. It's like you got that epiphany. There's, there's like, you know, this one deals with the root chakra. So you did the work, you know, you did that work necessary for you to have uh, a successful, you know, new beginning. And the 32 music, look at this. That card comes out a lot also. So some of you all are musicians. You play instruments. Some of you all have a gift. You know, you may be a singer. Someone could be dedicating music to you, sending you music, you know, thinking of you listening to certain songs maybe there's a particular song that someone feels just speaks to them says everything they wish to say to you or they feel like that song will just really um it will drive home whatever message that they feel or whatever emotion they feel um for you they could be listening to the same song over and over you know this makes them think of you Maybe some of you all are Clara uh, audient as well, and you're receiving some sort of messages. But someone is being told, like, to extend an olive branch because they have a lot of passion, too. This is somebody from your past because this one in this 32 is six. 
and this is that person that fills you the wish fulfillment because remember the 44 we got eight you know that environment card and all of this reduces to eight so we got four five five and six is two two and one is three and three and five is eight so this is that person that sees you as a wish fulfillment they're having some sort of epiphany or light bulb moment like you're the one they need to embark on this new begin yep see that they want to resurrect this connection reconcile this is somebody that wants to you know change the situation this is someone that really wants to to reconnect with you and with this seven here they want to they rushing in this is somebody rushing in because they just went through some sort of major transformation and this transformation is it's like the death card rebirth is really like death um it's the death of the old so it's like this there's a death of this this person's old way of speaking thinking maybe this is someone who was afraid to emote someone who had difficulties expressing themselves you know um they're now they've transformed they've changed and they're coming in quickly that 16 reduces to seven so they're charging in they feel very balanced very confident and they're going to be very assertive in, in, in expressing what it is that they desire, you know, and expressing what it is that they feel even. So let's go ahead and put these cards back. We're going to head, um, pick up on these messages that did come out for us. So the next card that came out was abundance. So you're going to have emotional abundance. You're going to have financial abundance. You're going to have stability, security. There's some sort of wish fulfillment that happened. And I was picking up, you know, like with the, you know, with the double numbers, the four to four, that eight. Now we got another eight. So it's like eight, eight, eight. And I'm seeing here with this 88, you know, the eight represents infinite possibilities, forward movement, progress, success, uh, wish fulfillment, answered prayers, you know, miracles that are taking place. This is bringing a lot of emotional fulfillment, happiness, satisfaction, joy, pride, you know, like just you feel elated. You know, this is abundance that represents like a plethora, plenty, a harvest, carnucopia. You're mirroring someone. So this person could be coming in. This could be new love coming in because this pink deals with the heart chakra. So this could be you and another person who are building up, mustering up the strength because the eight represents the strength card. But the eight also is in my mind's eye depicted as the star as well because 17 reduces to the eight that's the card for the star and so that star is how this person sees you we already i felt you know star vibes earlier when i was explaining how this person sees you in a whole new light you know i get a sense that this is a secret admirer and patience is necessary because this person could be working on themselves so that they can come in and offer you something real offer you something tangible so they could be really you know wanting to come in the right way do the right things you know this is somebody that wants to come in the right way someone that wants to really like really emote really show you the love that they failed to show you in the past because with this abundance it's like this person feels this this abundance of love and 88 reduces to 16, which is 7. And so that 7 is telling me, again, that this is this could be like, you know, that cancer. Somebody that feels very balanced, very much in alignment. This is someone very psychic, in tune, tapped in, tapped into your frequency, into your channel. So they could be literally, like I said, like, you know, maybe admiring you from afar, watching you from online. But this is definitely someone that is... Um, someone that is very attracted to you to say the least because this person is i feel like they're pondering you know the seven from the 88 and the two that's why it's taking patience because that's the hermit mode i was picking up that's nine you know so the 16 seven the eight eight reduces to 16 follow me walk with me y'all that's seven. And then when you put that together, the seven and the two is not. So that's why spirit is saying be patient because this person is also in hermit mode. You know, there's just showing that there's work being done. You know, this is a very, um, like I said, proactive process. You, ha you have to be proactive, you know, 
And so I'm feeling like that's what's happening. This hermit mode, this this time apart is allowing, you know, everyone to gain the clarity they need to see things, you know, see how far they've come even. So we have next 71 health. So whenever I see this card, I always feel because the purple deals with the, the, the uh, mental, it deals with the psyche, you know, that cerebral energy. And the 71 is always reminds me of like the eight of swords. Somebody's really up in their head, overthinking, analyzing, anxious, you know, ruminating, pining. This is like mental anguish. You know, with that health, I'm just picking up like the eight of swords where somebody is just self-inflicting this pain upon themselves. This this could change by changing their own perspective, their own mind. And because this is right next to the 88, which is seven, seven and eight is 15, that's 16. That's, I mean, that's uh, 15, that's six. So this is showing me like there's, you know, this person needs to trust their intuition, like trust what they see, like intuitively discerningly use their first eye instead of going with what's unseen you know like um not what's unseen like the unknown because it's like really what they're doing is they are self-sabotaging here with the 71 71 deals with that eight of swords whenever i think of that card like i said is like the eight of swords energy the eight of swords is really just somebody who's driving themselves mad man you're driving yourself mad because you're overthinking and over, you know, stressing yourself over something that you probably can't change. Worry is paying interest on problems that may never come. So that's why this is like self-inflicted mental anguish. This is self-sabotage because somebody is not using their intuition here when they should be, you know. Maybe somebody is like, dang, what if they don't do this? Playing the what if game. It's a dangerous, you know. That's a dangerous slope to to journey on because you could, you, you know, that it's like, what if, what if it does work? How about that? You know what I'm saying? But this is a very like negative mindset. This is a like a, a woe is me type of person, a self them loathsome type of approach or perspective. You know, this isn't someone who's, you know, like, you know, who takes control, who who's like. Like I said, like thinking from that, that broad and heightened perspective from their higher self, you know, tapping into that Christ consciousness or that God frequency. They're like in this lower fear mongering state of mind, you know, so that's why somebody's kind of going crazy. But look, nine completion. They finally get the answers they're seeking. There's a completion of that. So this is like wrapping up a cycle, taking that time out to reflect taking that time out to analyze, taking that time out to heal, to purge, to release, to change, to evolve. You know what I'm talking about? To love thyself. This is what's bringing about the change. Completion is wrapping up a cycle. A karmic cycle has been completed. Lessons have been learned. Knowledge has been applied. Wisdom, wisdom has been gained. So this is about living the experience. This is about going through each experience as a student and then becoming and morphing into the teacher because every student becomes the teacher at the same time. Sometimes you're teaching others while they're watching, you know, while you're learning. You could be the student and a teacher at the same time. But this all purple card shows me how psychic, how in tune, how tapped in. This is high energy, beloved. I just mentioned Christ consciousness, and that's literally the, the closest you get to that because that nine, like I said, you know, deals with the hierophant, and the hierophant is a master teacher, very wise. This is when you seek, this is with whom you seek wise counsel. You've reached a level of spiritual strength. You're in alignment, mind, body, and soul. And I feel like with this 96 right next to it, forgiveness, this is how you've been able to complete that cycle by releasing letting something go forgiving someone you know maybe someone is coming back and apologizing because i see this blue blue deals with the throat chakra someone may express an apology to you and because this person appears to be very genuine you will forgive them and i feel like you've forgiven them a long time ago you know but this this is the opportunity for you to receive it 
in real time because many of you what you did was you you know you accepted the apology that you never received you know what i'm saying you never received an apology you just forgave that person for an apology that was never extended to you but now there's an opportunity where i feel like somebody is going to apologize they're extending an olive branch because i feel like they have assessed themselves the same way you've assessed yourself they have observed where they misbehave where they mistreated you where they took you for granted where they didn't appreciate you the connection where they may not have expressed what they truly felt where they held back where they fought back where they fought their feelings where they just entertained people that weren't even on their frequency where they just was like distracted like they see all of that now in hindsight because that's what hermit mode does you know give me a moment let me sip on my blueberry wine excuse me i got like little grapes and things blueberries on the bottom of there they're so nice so yes so we're going to clarify these messages because this is beautiful and look what we have i can't make this up look what the energy is this is the divine feminine lady goddess on the bottom of the witch's wisdom deck and i mention that because we already saw 2121 that's 33 that's the Empress energy. We saw the 44, which was the environment, and then Perseverance came out for. That was the masculine energy. So on the bottom of the deck, we see clearly that you all have definitely reached this level of self-mastery where you are, you know, you are the master manifestors. You are the sole controllers of your destiny. You are manifesting your desired outcomes, your realities, you're co-creating with source, you're creating, you're birthing new ideas. Some of you can be pregnant with child. Some of you are just all about your family right now, about their legacy, their stability, their future. You know, on the split, we have death. So the rebirth. This is what you've done. You've emerged. I just mentioned how you all have reached a level of self-mastery. How did you do that? Because you've just gone through a major transformation. Death is your card. Death speaks to you transforming, changing from an old per version of yourself and transforming into a new, more evolved version. Someone that is beautiful, wise, confident, powerful regal royal domestic nurturing maternal if you're masculine energy someone who's dapper debonair who's strong who's powerful who's a leader who's paternal who's protective who's affectionate communicative honest loyal faithful like this is powerful this is what you had to transform into you all are the conduits of change so i absolutely feel as you changed and transformed you triggered activated your divine counterpart your cosmic companion because you are the conduits of change you are in that um a part of your property or a part of your uh your character is to transmute energy you know you are to transmute energy and that's literally what this deaf card is about so i feel like with that that patience it required a lot of patience like i said it's not about just patiently waiting and fiddling your thumbs while you wait it's about the work you're doing as you are supposedly waiting waiting isn't something you do idly you know you don't just wait idle a idle mind is the devil's playground. We know that. So you have to always be building. You have to always be growing. You have to always be pushing yourself, learning. Knowledge is infinite. Wisdom is infinite. So it's like, why not be learning something new while you're manifesting something that you desire, while you're waiting for it to come into fruition? And that's exactly what we see here. The death of the old, but the birth of this beautiful divine feminine that was what the patience was all about good things take time to create is what i heard when i first saw that you know good things take time to create you know so let's tap into an in divine spirit of love and light what's coming in 
for my beautiful Scorpios from the Witch's Wisdom. May I have a message of love and light. This is going to be a deep dive, as I said. And we have invocation ritual. Some of you all have been utilizing your magic, co-creating, manifesting, setting intention. Some of you all could have been birthing new ideas. This is just a really beautiful energy. So let's see what we got coming and going out, going on for my beautiful Scorpios. I'm gonna get our clarifying message from the Witches Tarot. Bottom of the deck, we have Ethos Wiccan Read. So this is about patience. Patience is spirit is uh, making sure that whatever is coming in. It is going to be balanced. It is going to be righteous. Someone could be dealing with karma at this time. Because the Wiccan read is about, you know, upholding the laws. So someone could be getting, you know, having karma for something they may have done. Patience is necessary. Somebody's going through, you know, a karmic relationship. Somebody's dealing with a karmic. Maybe someone's free will and liberty was being taken away from them. And that's why someone is being judged. You know, there's a judgment here. With this Wiccan read, somebody was probably uh, had someone doing some witchcraft on them or some sort of spell work. Someone could still be doing this. And that could be why it's causing someone to be in two minds or too, com you know, confused or conflicted in some way, shape or matter because there was someone like manipulating energy or doing something that was unjust. See, I didn't even see this card. Concealment on the bottom of the deck as I was saying all of this stuff, I just put the deck down and was looking here and I looked down and the concealment, this is a hidden enemy. This is somebody that is really an enemy and they have some hidden agenda and motive. See this? Look at these nasty dark ass cards on the bottom of the deck. We got shadow, intention, death, and then we have concealment. This is somebody concealing their true intentions. This is someone that could be a little... Because I see the death card and that's, this is like somebody could be jealous of someone transforming. You know, somebody really was dealing with a hidden enemy and I feel like this person was doing black magic. But because you all know your power and because you all definitely know how to deal with your shadow side or do shadow work, I feel like you was able to to purge that energy it's like you was able to see that because you're highly intuitive and you're also protected because these lanterns represent protection so i feel like you had ancestors protecting you from something someone was doing privately this is like a hidden enemy trying to set something but you all are mas master manifestors because as i said before you all have um learned how to transmute, you know, this negative energy, how to become the conduits of change, how to manifest. So there was someone here concealed. Damn, I don't like that energy. Why is it? Let me get one more card for this Wiccan read and patience. Let me get one more card, Spirit, for Wiccan read and patience. Thank you. They gave me two more. So this is definitely someone watching you, I feel. This is definitely someone watching because I feel like this person... Yep, and something ended because this is the, the, the winter. Winter is when everything dies. So there's some sort of ending. So that was about karma. You know, something had turned cold. You know, somebody could have had somebody under some sort of, I feel like, a spell. Some sort of freezer spell. I'm getting a freezer spell. They was, like, taking someone's free will and liberty away. And I feel like um, a relationship turned cold regardless Someone's being judged, perhaps, for doing some sort of um, some sort of spell work. And that's why patience was here, because there was some 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 lessons, some karmic lessons being learned, karmic cycles being completed. 
but this is like also speaking to the death because the winter is you know a time where things die so i do feel like you know something got cold someone watched you you know watch watches you from a distance they definitely appear to be in um you know almost like two minds you know maybe they're in a relationship but yet they're thinking and longing for you you know um but there is some sort of karma dharma here and we have balance so balance that's why it's being paid patience is here next to this because you know good things take time to create as i said so it requires time you know divine timing sometimes for uh someone to come into alignment with their cosmic companion for you to come into alignment with your cosmic companion but we have earth that fell out also so we're going to put that there and that was actually the card that did fall out um that did fall out with the uh watchtower uh of the north winter but spirit told me to place it here so this this earth grounding you know, um, is showing me that there's some balance being restored, feeling very stable, self-sufficient, independent, um, very emotionally and financially fulfilled, stable, content, happy. You know, I feel like things are flourishing for you. I feel like you are in a place right now where you're feeling um, stable. You know, you just feel more stable than you've ever been things seem to be um you know just kind of working out for you for the better you know very beautiful energy i, I i'm really feeling this energy uh so with the balance card it, there is you know the the energy of like i said you know that duality of finding um the harmony you know that yin and yang the the divine masculine divine feminine someone is out of harmony out of equilibrium that's why the balance is here so they need to get out of you know two minds and just really trust their intuition follow what you know their intuition and use discernment because that is you know really the the only compass they need they should not allow others to misdirect them or to you know to to lead them astray to distract so this is what this person needs to really you know get out of two minds and to really assess the situation uh from a higher perspective from a deeper more profound perspective so let's see why is this 71 health here for my beautiful scorpios may I have a message of love and light because that is like mental anguish like self-imposed and spirit is like, look, you need to balance yourself, balance your thoughts. So we have invocation here yet again. And we have summer. So summer is when everything, so we got the opposite of winter and we have summer here. So it does sh show that this person has changed perhaps their perspective. There's something blossoming here. There's happiness. The sunflowers are very indicative of immortality, um, immor Im immortality um, back in ancient Chinese history they used to eat the sunflowers because they felt like it would make them in, in, immortal um, but this is showing that this is um, a very strong and powerful um, step forward somebody's come out of a dark period and seeing something so clearly clear as day um, this is like they're they're no longer in this headspace of confusion and delusion or fear mongering or lack. You know, it's like this person has finally had an epiphany. You know, this is like finally being honest, being transparent with oneself, but also feeling strong. This is a new version, a new version of themselves. This is seeing things with a whole new perspective. Um, this is having 2020 vision, things becoming crystal clear, but also being very happy. You know, there's this, this like genuine emotion of happiness. Uh, maybe someone is realizing that's what they have been trying to deny. That was the self-sabotage or that was, you know, the deceit that they had they were afflicting upon themselves was you know that they didn't feel these feelings um for someone that they absolutely did 
um, with this invocation, I do feel like whatever this ritual is, it's done. Spirit is wrapping it up. It's, it is not going to have uh, take any flight. It's not going to, you know, gain any momentum. It's not going to um, be successful. So whatever these people are doing, it's wrapping it up. You know, whoever these people are that are trying to do something to cause uh, some sort of um, manipulate, like manipulating someone's energy, whoever these private people are, they, they may be exposed. You know, they may be exposed because the cycles is right next to concealment. This is a very sneaky person. This is someone very, very um, malicious very they, they carry a lot of contempt this is like a witch a warlock this is someone with a chip on their shoulder and this is definitely someone who is doing some sort of spells um but i feel with this nine it's like they're trying to cause some sort of completion ending i feel like they're trying to cause a delay a block but i feel what's going to happen is you're picking up on that with that purple card because you're highly intuitive. I feel like your angels and ancestors are also going to be protecting you. But I feel like spirit is telling you, don't try to counterattack or do anything. Um, just let, you know, let everything work out as it should. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to receive karma. I just feel strong sense of like this person receiving karma. And it's going to be heavy. Why is uh, completion here for my beautiful Scorpios? May I have a message of love and light spirit. Thank you. And we have secret book of shadows. See that? These these shadows, the, I mean these secrets, what's hidden, what's, what's lurking. I feel like this secret is going to be exposed. And that's what's ultimately leading to some sort of completion of a cycle. Maybe someone is going to realize... Or there's going to be some sort of confirmation or somebody is going to find something that's going to let them know that someone has been doing magic. And the ones that's going to let them know is their ancestors. Ancestors are going to lead someone to a particular area, something, and they're going to find something. Because someone has been doing something against someone's will. This is like when you are going against, this is why this is a reminder, like, look, you know, whatever you're doing, trust and believe, you're going to have to pay, you know, infinitely for that. You know, karma, dharma, karma has every, everyone's address. And that's why this patience is here, you know, because something has been, it's being worked out, you know, justice, mama, ma'a, universe, source is saying, look, you know, this, this, something is ending. This is the death of this this injustice this is the death of whatever you know because i picked up on like a, a, a freezer spell with this as well you know but this i feel like it's like somebody is trying to keep somebody stuck in a relationship i feel like it has a lot to do with you know uh finances needing someone to help out with the bills it's no love involved because this is a cold castle you know, this castle looks cold. You know, this looks almost like the tower. You know, so this it's very dark looking, you know, and it's just like so there is definitely no love, no emotion, no fulfillment, no, no, none of that. So I did. I just really strongly feel like, you know, somebody's really taking time to build that relationship to develop a relationship with their ancestors and angels and this is what they tell them to do you got to clear out the old so that the new can come in because somebody is really trying to hold someone back this is like someone trying to prevent someone from leaving you know this is a book of spells they're doing magic to prevent someone from having this completion of a cycle someone doesn't want the cycle to end this is like a codependent person someone codependent this is someone that is a double talker, you know, talks with a forked tongue, a Judas, a Jake, a fake, a snake, a frenemy, someone that's very beguiling. And it's just right, this energy just is it's persistent because 
you know, we saw all of those cards, like the concealment and, the, and we saw invocation and, you know, now we see that. But this is what someone has to do. They got to really connect with their ancestors. They got to de dedicate more time building, developing a relationship with their ancestors, which I feel they are doing. And then they're going to clear out the cycle. Some of you all may need to, you know, pour some salt in your home and just sweep it out the front door. Purchase a little cinnamon broomstick, place it by the front door. Maybe you need to clean outside of your front door. Maybe someone has poured something in front of your front door and you need to cleanse it. You need to pour ammonia first as your base and then cleanse it. Mop in front of you to sweep and mop and then put your own protective potions in front of your own uh, front door because it is possible that somebody could have poured some war water or something and I feel like or did something to keep someone contained because I just keep feeling like someone has been like held beyond their free will you know I keep hearing that somebody's being held um maybe someone's in prison in jail locked up someone recently just got locked up someone feels jailed feels imprisoned but that's a, a state of mind that's why they got to get out of their head you know and they got to start looking at things from a bird's eye view start looking at things from a different perspective even but there is an opportunity of love this is a twin flame connection and there's this shadow look at the shadow figure sitting here hating they're sitting here hating on this connection. See that face in the mirror? Someone watching and stalking? That's that same person that's concealed. It's the same person. This is someone who has a very um, obsessive, possessive karmic ex. They know that this connection is real love. Like, th there's no denying this. You got fertility look at this connection look at the passion look at the connect the, the the chemistry look at the synergy that's that you can't deny that chemistry and the love that these two feel and there's someone here someone could be doing you know mirror magic someone could be doing some sort of spell you know they're doing some sort of spell to to cause you know um a delay or a block in a reunion However, with this completion, I strongly feel like spirit is saying that cycle, that karmic um, relationship is going to end regardless. Regardless of what this person is doing, whatever magic this person may be doing, it's, it's going to end regardless. So let's see. Why is forgiveness here? Dang, that car flew all the way over there. We have autumn here. We are in the season of autumn. This is our season. So... Something very significant may happen. Give me a moment. Let me get these cards. My bad. So the three cards is. Which is cottom, uh, cottage security. Interesting. And I told y'all y'all was protected. But this is also letting you know. You know that. Uh, spirit don't play about you. Because they are on guard they are watching they got eyes on you they got eyes on whoever you have coming in because we already saw it was a spiritual partnership so whenever you have that type of connection with someone and spirit is watching over that connection that means that that is something that is preordained written in the stars and when somebody tries to interfere with that they're going to have to pay for the consequences of their actions so whatever seeds they're sowing, whatever, you know, in bad faith, whatever, that's why that Wiccan Reed came out. It's a reminder that, look, you have to uphold the laws because when you don't trust and believe, you're, you're going to suffer the consequences. So with this security, always, I always pay attention to that black cat there. That black cat represents being impervious to threat. So that's about being very, you know, very in tune 96 reduces to 15 that's six that's your intuition your first eye so cats could see they could see they're very intuitive as well you know they have perfect vision they can see a, very well at night you know you ever see their eyes glow at night when light hits it a certain way cats can see at night so you are very protected you have a very 
you know, um, you're very guarded, you know, you're very protective of your energy, you have set up very strong defenses, um, and spirit is saying, you know, forgiveness, um, you may appear to be very guarded, someone may feel that you're very guarded, but they're coming in seeking your forgiveness, perhaps because they've learned something, you know, they've learned something about a decision or a choice that they've made, you know, in the past, which went against something that you may have said, you know, you may have forewarned them and they didn't pay attention and then they learned the lesson the hard way and now they're coming back, you know, very humbly, you know, asking for your forgiveness, but also apologizing for discrediting you and not giving you, you know, the respect that you deserved, you know, not listening. But the next card we have is Witch's Hat Power. See that? You all are very, very powerful, Scorpios. I love to see that card because that just shows me the connectivity you have, you know, with your spirit team, with Earth, Mother Guy, Universe, Source. It's like you are tuned in. That's why I was picking up like y'all are co-creators right now. You know, transmuting energy. You're helping others become, you know, triggered and activated to change so you're the conduit of change but you possess this power and this power is very um obvious it's very evident it's it's, it's heavily felt as well so you could be coming off very very um protective of yourself and someone could be a little perhaps intimidated perhaps or just maybe even apprehensive, not sure who they're going to get, not sure what's going to be said, you know, just kind of maybe just a little bit afraid. <laughs> and so we have incubation. See that? So someone is trying to figure out how to come back and ask for an apology. Because whenever I see this, I always think of someone being born again. This is like a rebirth. And this looks like a, a masculine body. But more importantly, this is an adult in the womb of Mother Gaia. So it's like, this is, again, that energy of grounding, you know, healing, growing. Someone's learning from you, mirroring your energy all the whole step of the way because you are the one that possesses the power. You know, the Astara card is actually uh, the divine feminine in the divine guidance, the goddess guidance deck. So I find this very interesting. Someone appears to be, you know, looking to grow you know, to, to, to heal, to gain a more evolved perspective, to become more emotionally intelligent, you know, um, they've seen things, this is almost like a hermit as well, you know, the hermit goes within, seeks within to find the answers, so that's like spirit is really putting someone in a position where, you know, they're protected as they learn, they're protected as they grow, someone has been isolating themselves, and this is why they're coming to the realization like they need to ask for your forgiveness because they may not have uh, appreciated you or valued you. I feel during the fall, we just had the uh, spring, uh, fall equinox the other day. And remember, the time to turn your clocks um, back is coming up. I think it happens in November. I don't know why I'm talking about that. But it's like it's fall back, spring forward. So this is definitely someone that fell back from you, ghosted you. You may have ghosted them. We did see time out earlier. So there's been a long pause between communication, conversations that you've had with this person and vice versa. And as you can see, they're clearly taking the necessary time out, you know, to heal themselves, to assess, to introspect, to reflect, to gain a deeper understanding. And to more importantly, come out of this grounded, come out of this feeling, uh, in equilibrium more in harmony this person sees how wise you are how powerful you are they feel your power they feel your strength the connectivity as well the chemistry the synergy and so we have the awakening somebody's waking up see they're waking up to who you are so they had to go through some sort of painful death and ending karmic ending that's why completions are here they was wrapped in a karmic cycle that was filled with magic and charms and spells witchery somebody was just doing the most to them that's why it was taking patience because their their spirit team their angels even if this was your energy 
and not a vice versa situation. They've been growing, they've been healing, and they've been breaking curses, hexes, yokes, and spells off of their asses. There's been an awakening here. And they're awakening to who you are, what you mean to them, what you what they feel for you more importantly. And I always see this card, you know, this is a mirroring also. Someone that could have been very stubborn in the past because I was picking up on karma. Now they're learning. They're coming into this awakening, into this awareness of who you are. And they're still watching, always watching. And you can see how they're warming up to you, warming up to the idea. Because it went from, you know, the winter. Now we got autumn, you know. And now we, you know, we also had the summer come out. So it's like this person, you know, this is like seasons. So this person went through a season. They had a relationship that was seasonal. They thought it was going to go the long mile that it was going to sustain or that it was going to um, stand the test of time. And what they're coming to realize is they may not have made the right decision, the best decision, you know. What they thought was real was an illusion because somebody was gaslighting them. We had the uh, shadow card show up as well. Someone was gaslighting them. Someone was manipulating their energy. Someone was doing charms and witchery, witchcraft spells. I heard I saw like a freezer spell here with this winter card for some reason. I'm also seeing like uh, passion spells come to me spells all kind of little spells but spirit is saying it's the end of this you know what's in the dark always comes out in the light what's in the wash always comes out in the rinse and so i feel like whatever the secret is it's going to be exposed nine is the highest number of change and so every ending denotes a new beginning this person is definitely walking away from something that feels long overdue you know so let's see what we got coming and going out going on. We're going to use, let me see which one. I'm going to use the hoodoo deck. So we have Big Mama on the bottom of the deck. Big Mama is the sun card in this deck. This is beautiful. Some of you all have a grandmother that's in the spirit realm. She watches over you. She was a hell of a cooker. Like, I feel like she she had the key to your heart as well. Like she was someone that may have been a maternal figure for you. She raised you, taught you everything you knew. She taught you how to cook. Maybe you used to make cornbread with your grandmother. If this isn't a grandmother, it's a matriarch, like a grand aunt, or even your own mama, your mumi. This umi, I feel like this is definitely someone that taught you everything you knew. She is beautiful, man. She used to dress to the nines. Like if she attended church, she used to dress up, like had the best hat, the best outfit. She was always willing to help out. Just very giving, very empathic, very nurturing, very loving, very beautiful energy I'm picking up. And she's blessing you. She's praying. You know, she's watching over you. I feel like you all have some, some money coming in too. Because this cornbread, that's like, um, I'm just getting an analogous energy of like money. You know, we call bread money. You know, bread, cheddar, cheese, biscuits, dough. That's all money. Those are terms for money, you know, um, for those who uh, don't have, you know, e book, e uh, how do you say Ebonics? You know, if you don't have an Ebonics degree, just drop the jewel for you. So pick it up. But the cornbread, I'm just picking up a feeling like, you know, there's abundance here. It's beautiful. So let's see what we got on the split, beloved. So we have the Daughter of Knives. This is the Page of Swords and the Sun. See that? So this is the I Spy card. I was picking up on a lot of energy, just, you know, like spying. I was picking up on a secret admirer, but I'm also picking up on an energy where you have several people watching you. So you could be kind of like in the limelight. You'd be doing something where there's a lot of eyes on you. And everybody that's watching is not watching with, um, you know, with, with a positive um with with positivity in heart like some of these people are looking to take from you to steal from you your energy uh some of these people are bots some of these people are low vibrational and others just may see you as a beacon of light you know but i do feel like you are in the spotlight 
There are eyes watching you. There are some eyes. And maybe this is uh, possibly, you know, because we have the patience card, the Wiccan read and the watchtower card here that we are about to clarify. And so with the page of swords, that definitely confirms with the watchtower that somebody is watching you from afar. Someone that doesn't feel um, like they're in your good graces or someone that has very cold, uh, callous energy very cold. This could be that person that's uh, dealing with, you know, some sort of spell, you know, um, dealing, maybe somebody went to a, a practitioner or somebody is uh, dealing with someone who has done some sort of spell work, you know, and uh, with this energy, they're watching. See, they see you in the sun, this, this, like you, you are radiant, you are bright, you are abundant, you are strong. Everything this person may feel they aren't, and that's why they're projecting their misdirected animosity towards you, hatred towards you. See that? The Ten of Pentacles. You appear to be very successful, very abundant. This is someone who's going through perhaps like a breakup, a marriage is failing. Maybe somebody feels like they could obtain this happy house, happy spouse with you. I feel like there's definitely an ending of some sort of happy, you know, happy family life because the tens denote endings. I feel like somebody had stayed in a relationship um, because of children. Someone was with them for the money, for the stability. There goes the grandchildren. This is the star card. Someone absolutely sees you as a star, Scorpio. That you're their wish fulfillment. They've prayed for you. They've asked for you. They've called you in. They feel you bring them happiness. They also feel you're very domestic. You know, I don't know if you ever cooked for this person, but they feel like you could cook your ass off. Like, you know, like you, you just seem to be, you know, someone who's just um, very resourceful, very domestic. They see you. At, look at that. They feel this is destined. This is Aunt Carolina's the destiny card. You're definitely in the spotlight for something. You're going to get recognition for something. There's all eyes on you, people watching you. Like, this is definitely like you, you're, you're receiving some sort of blessing, reward. There's a wish fulfillment. There's abundance. There's success. New beginnings. New money. People looking at you in a whole new light now. People keeping tabs because I was picking up like there were several people watching you. So I don't know if like you're going to make the news or you're going to be um, you're going to go viral or there's something where you're getting attention. You know, there's some sort of attention that you're getting. This also speaks to what's destined, what's meant to come in is coming in. You know, this could be love. This is the a destiny type of love. Someone that was trying to put a stick in the wheel of this this wheel of fortune to prevent it from moving forward, to prevent it from giving out the abundance. It's like that stick has is, is been removed by spirit. And there goes that Ace of Pentacles. Look at that. You got money coming in, y'all. This is financial blessings. This is rewards. This is stability, security. This is like a new job offer. This is a new loan. This is a new home, a new car. This is stash of money. I was picking up on you all like thinking about your legacy, your children's future, leaving behind, you know, a legacy for your children. And look at that ten of knives. There's a reward because you've gone through something painful. Ten of swords is like, you know, to the back is like the ultimate betrayal. People you trusted, you know, Scorpios always learn hardest way that, you know, the people that always disappoint Scorpios are the ones that's closest to them because Scorpios don't really have large crowds of people around them you know the people that they trust are very far and few between but they always learn lessons from those individuals um that they had in their circles because those are the only ones that could get close enough so it's like it's it's like really a painful um circumstance that happened you felt de deceived and betrayed you know these were people that you felt like you had um you know given a lot to and maybe someone betrayed you because they got distracted by someone else. But I also feel like not only did they get distracted, they also got coerced. They got, you know, um, duped. They got mind upped. They also got, you know, played. It's almost like giving me an energy of, you know, some sort of player getting played. That's why I was picking up on karma as well. 
But the Ten of Swords is really necessary because it's like, you know, you learn from this mistake and you won't ever repeat this. This is not going to be a mistake you're going to repeat. But I feel spirit sees how hard you've worked to um, heal yourselves, that you're being rewarded for something that you've been praying for and asking for. So that's beautiful. So spirit, let me get a message of love and light. We're going to clarify all of these messages. Spirit may have a message of love and of light for my beautiful Scorpios. And why is this number two? The Watchtower of the North and Wiccan Reed here for my beautiful Scorpios may have a message of love and a message of light, spirit. Bottom of the deck, we have the Ten of Swords. See that? So there is a painful ending here. That's why patience. Somebody is learning some sort of lesson. That's why spirit is telling you to be patient because I feel like whoever you're attracting, they are going through this at this time. You know, they've been betrayed, they've been lied to, backstabbed, and that's why it's requiring you to be patient because someone is learning some lessons here. This is about learning uh, valuable lessons. This is about gaining spiritual st strength, coming into alignment with oneself, finding harmony again, but also, you know, discovering the truth about what was hidden, you know, facing, you know, some of their biggest fears. But the Ten of Swords, that reduces to the Ace, so it now gives you the opportunity to cut yourself free from what does not serve you. The people, people that you were trusting foolishly or ignorantly, or maybe you were blind to some of the things they were doing secretly. And it's like, then you, you, you have this aha moment, this epiphany. So that's powerful. The bottom of the deck, we got the Ace of Coins. So this is, again, saying there's abundance, there's a plethora, there's you know, opulence here, expansion here, growth. This is a major breakthrough. Look at the Ace of Swords. I just mentioned it. So there's some communication coming in about, you know, some sort of finances. These are new beginnings. Maybe an idea that you have is leading to this success, this abundance, this fortune and fame. You know, that Ace of Swords is really talking about uh, uh, you revolutionizing something, galvanizing something, and it becoming very, very successful that you're going to be... Um, I'm going to have some sort of stability here. It's abundance. You know, we're about to clarify the 88 abundance card along with the, the grounding card here. You know, and this grounding is speaking to you very, being very, you know, very grounded, very balanced, very stable, very secure. You know, feeling very content. Like you have a harvest. Like the seeds that you have sowed, they are, they are now harvesting. They are now flourishing. And it's producing fruit. It's producing, you know, um, it's producing, period. So, Spirit, why is this 888 abundance and earth grounding here for my beautiful Scorpios? Thank you, Spirit. Wow. And we have the uh, Father of Knives. So this is some sort of idea that you had, you know. This is an idea that you had. This is also like when I look into this basket, I see what appears to be like clocks. They always look like clocks to me. And so I feel like divine timing. There's communication that's coming in because somebody really wants to find balance within this connection. You know, this person is like, this is a very humble looking uh, father of knives. You know, usually the the father of knives looks very intimidating. This one looks a little more approachable, very, you know, he he seems to be very grounded. You know, when you look at this energy, somebody wants to clear the air. You know, that's what I pick up on. With this abundance, I feel like this is because there's like an abundance of love and emotion. You know, it's intensifying. It's growing. That pink deals with the heart chakra. This person sees, you know, just how beautiful you are, how regal and royal, how, you know, how much you've evolved, you've changed. You're a different person. They see you as a star. And this person really just wants to communicate and express something, get something off their chest. Maybe that's this is the apology. You know, they've now come away from a situation that was very burdensome. They've been through some of the things that they now can see and identify um, that they've done to you, you know, they've offended you in the same ways they may have felt offended. That's why I was picking up a lot of karma, dharma energy. Ten of coins, excuse me, this is somebody definitely here up in their head about some sort of family dynamic. The ten of coins is 
you know, we just saw that. So they're really like ruminating and pining. They was trying to make something work. They was willing to compromise. And it still came to the end, you know, to a very painful end, a sudden loss. You know, this is where there was once happiness and laughter, feeling like you had a partner, a life partner, support system, and then something ending, something, you know, literally transforming the circumstance for the for the bad. But the summer is showing that there is something new dawning. You know, there's a birthing of something new, a new relationship, a new opportunity. Maybe someone needs to look at this as a blessing in disguise. Because with this Ten of Pentacles, every ending denotes a new beginning. So if this relationship ended on a sour note, it doesn't mean that that's the end all be all. That means that there's a new opportunity. You know, that's what the summer represents. All of these beautiful sunflowers, the sunflowers, um, if you watch them, they always face the direction of the sun. So they'll f look up. It's like they literally, they they move, you know. I have sunflowers now on my altar, my Orisha altar, and they literally move towards the direction of the sun. It's beautiful to watch. And so this person is now moving towards what brings them light, illumination, what makes them feel happy, what makes them feel content. They are being strong within themselves to make that decision so that they can make this offer this ten of pentacles even though that relationship ended in the past they still have a pentacle that they can offer to you because they that's what they truly desire wow dr buzzard so dr buzzard is the um justice card here and i was picking up on karma dharma so this is a part of what they want to re-establish is boundaries they want to speak a truth they want to confess some things but they also want to bring balance and harmony uh into the situation i feel like a reason why they're conflicted mentally is because of something they may have done in the past but because he, this this card is smiling justice is about things turning out in your favor the scales being you know balanced out for you he's got this big smile so i do feel like he's smiling because he's had that that grand epiphany and it's been very you know it's, it's it's very revealing and this can also free him of this anguish you know this anguish this anxiety we got the nine of coins here we got completion and um book of shadows we're about to clarify so this nine of coins is here so someone definitely is ready to wrap up a cycle with somebody that they have this karmic that's doing these this black magic, this voodoo, hoodoo, juju, santeria, black magic, white magic, ritual work, spell work, whatever they're doing to manipulate people's energy. You are someone's driving force. They're looking at you like you're independent. This is the nine of pentacles. Independent, self-sufficient, self-reliant, handling your business. You, you know, you're not minding nobody else's. You got your mind on your money, money on your mind. You over here like you're chilling. You know what I'm talking about? And somebody is sitting here saying, I've got to get back to my Scorpio. That is where my happiness is. That was where my peace is. They speak my love language. This person doesn't feel safe or doesn't feel the love in this connection because a lot of their, their this connection is really based off of manipulation. It's like manipulating someone. It's like you almost got a bot. You know, when you're controlling someone's emotions and trying to control how someone feels towards you, that that's not really... You know, you're not really in a loving connection. You're in one of, you know, puppet mastering. You're, you're puppet master in the situation. It's almost like you're practicing, you know, love. Not even practicing, but like you're um, engineering it. You're bioengineering. I heard bioengineering love. And it's not going to hit the same. It's not going to feel the same. That's why this person is is being pulled away from that per from their karmic that's doing these obvious spells. They, they, you know, it's not making them feel love and warmy and tingly inside. It's making them feel crazy, stir crazy, because it's like they're still a spirit, you know. And 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 shit, who knows? Maybe this person is cooking food and and witches brew and got them all, you know, really like stuck we don't know that's why spiritual baths of uh of our are of importance you know that's why having a connection that's why the devotion card showed up you have to be devoted to 
your angels and your ancestors. You have to develop a relationship. That way they can give you divine intervention to let you know like when something is off. You, you got to be tuned in to where you can trust your intuition, where you can know something's off, something don't feel right or something else is happening. Your energy is being manipulated or someone is around you that's not right. That's why it's important to be tapped in. You know what I'm talking about? So let's see. Why is this nine completion card here in secret for my beautiful Scorpios? May I have a message of love and light spirit. Why is this nine completion? Thank you. I'm not taking 55,000 cards. And I just saw the death card. I mean the devil card. See that? Mrs. Robinson is the devil. That's who this person is completing and wrapping, wrapping up a cycle with. Is the whole devil. A, de a devil is deceitful. A devil is a trickster. A devil speaks with a forked tongue. A devil has no conscience, none. They can hurt you and not give a damn and keep on hurting you. The Nine of Pentacles back on the same, on the bottom of the deck. This is about, see this energy? You got the Nine of Coins and Miss Ida. She got her eyes on you. But I feel also you, if you look at this woman's clothes, it always looks like evil eyes all over them. So it's like you're protected. While she got her eyes on you, you got evil eyes on her. Because this is the one that's doing all of these spells. If you look in the background, she got a bunch of different spells going at the same time. Manipulating a bunch of people's energy. So the cards that flew out was four of knives. See that? Someone who's healing from heartache and pain. This is someone rejuvenating their spirit, taking the time out to meditate. To rest, to rejuvenate, to contemplate, to get things straight, reflecting. This is also about taking, you know, taking onus and accountability. The nine is really that energy of, you know, the hermit. The hermit doesn't seek outside of self. They go within. That's exactly what this person is doing. They're taking a little pause to ground themselves. He's laying on the grass, looking up at the skies, but his eyes are closed. And he's grounding himself. This is a completion of a cycle. This person can no longer deal with the secrets, the lies, the manipulation. This person knows they have to ground themselves. They know that there's love elsewhere. They know they have a twin flame elsewhere. This two of cups is like someone that feels strongly that you give to them equally. Like they can have equal give and take. Like they can have this equal exchange. And this, this, this hateful, vindictive, jealous, controlling, possessive, obsessive, uh, which is trying to block this, trying to keep this person confused about what they want in two minds, just as I said. This is like having somebody in two minds. You, beloved, are protected because you are also very powerful, very spiritual, very psychic, very clairvoyant. This person does not know that you are just as in tune and psychic your person is being protected by mother Gaia so that they could stay grounded so that they could be protected spirit is also telling you to utilize your power to protect yourself that's why security is here keep your defenses up this person is absolutely someone that knows not what they're doing that's why spirit be like you know smile and forgive them all forgive those who know not what they do this person doesn't realize the laws of karma they don't realize they're going to have to reap what they sow whatever it is they send into you i feel like you already are saying return that ish on back to sender because it's not mine whatever doesn't belong to you you send it back whatever belongs to you you command it back return my blood return my peace return my finances return my health my happiness whatever someone is trying to do to to um manipulate your energy you demand it back but you send it send back whatever it is that they're causing you so whatever pain whatever confusion but this right here this is where that person is that's why they're in incubation being forced to look at everything from a completely different vantage point and what they discover is exactly what i said before that they have eyes for you the two of cups this is someone who knows you speak their love language. You both have something to offer one another. The masculine is cheesing. This is love. Look at the love language. This person thinks of you often, dreams of you often. This person was absolutely being manipulated. 
they couldn't speak look at the mouth i always get like this mouth looks swollen so it looks like you know whenever this person tries to speak up or something maybe whatever witch witchery that's being done it prevents them from being able to speak truth speak their truth express themselves or to it's it has something to do with their communication and their ability to express themselves but with both of these swords up it's like now they have some sort of clarity when your mouth is swollen it's hard for you to communicate this always looked like a swollen swollen mouth so i feel like this person has a diff difficult time communicating but also they were being um psychic uh, psychically attacked as well but this nine of chalices this person got their eyes on you and you are absolutely protected and look who's looking right at miss Eda, that white cat and this white cat what did i say about cats they're impervious to threat you already know you know you good to go but your cat is protecting you this cat is very protective of you you may have a cat animal totem maybe you have an ancestor because we did pick up on a mother figure a maternal figure that was watching over you all protecting you all so let's get some messages from my deck and then we're gonna wrap it up uh shay so look what we have here ringing in the ears and didn't i say in the beginning of this reading that i had a ring a very loud ring in my right ear so some of you all may be having these sensations. Some of you all may be, you know, and that that is definitely a clear indication that there's spirits communicating with you, an angel, an ancestor, some spirit guide or someone that you have a very strong energetic connection to, even someone that's in this sp uh, f physical realm, you know, like a cosmic companion or something. But there's definitely like some communication coming through, uh, you know, being transmitted here. So spirit. What messages? We're going to clarify these messages with my deck, and then we're going to wrap it up. All right, so we got a couple of cards that flew up in the upright, and those are the ones we're going to focus on. Everything else that's face down is going to stay. Um, we're going to chat. We're going to, uh, what you call it? We're going to expound. Spirit told me to expound, especially after I see what I see here. So this is face down. That stays there, bottom of the deck. Basic instructions before leaving Earth, seeking higher knowledge. So someone definitely, remember when I was uh, picking up with that uh, 14 card, and I was saying that was the number five, that was the moderations in the numerology deck. That's when you go and sit at the feet of the elders. So someone could be going to a pastor, someone could be going to someone, maybe they're reading their own Bible. Look what's underneath that. Promotions, pay increase, lucrative business deals, be thankful. Some of you all are also coming into that because we saw the abundance card, uh, which is here. And we also saw, um, we also had a couple of cards which were speaking to uh, financial blessings. But let's get to this portion of the reading. So with this basic instruction, someone is like literally learning. You know, this is like, you know, seeking counsel seeking wise counsel uh trying to gain a deeper more profound understanding trying to heal after disappointment after you know being let down or hurt azabachi ward off any demonic energies that's uh that's jet uh it's a type of mineral or stone if you want to call it that but this is what came out first that's the first cards and then these cards were the cards that um were expounds they flew on the floor and this was the other cards that were upright so i said i was taking the uprights but we're going to expound with these and this was one of the cards that flew on the deck I mean, on the table, this was the one that flew upright. So this Azabachi is clarifying the two patients, Wiccan Reed, Watchtower, and the Ten of Knives. Hello, does that make sense? Somebody is warding off negative energy. This is about someone's being manipulated energetically, psychically. There is some sort of witchcraft, some sort of demonic energies trying to attack someone. This is definitely a forewarning, a red flag. The Ten of Swords definitely speaks to being backstabbed, betrayed, deceived. These are energy vampires. These are parasites. These are leeches. This is a spiritual transmitted disease, something causing that mental anguish, that confusion. It says, ask for what you need. Closed mouths don't get fed. 
So this person, remember I was picking up like somebody could not speak up because their mouth is all swollen here. Because it's some, like somebody is like taking someone's free liberties and will away from them, you know. And so it's like this person here is really grounding themselves. This is how they're able to start seeing things clearer, clearer because they take the time out to ground themselves, to heal themselves. And what they start to see is that they have this abundance of love, these abundance of feelings, emotions for you. They feel you ground them that you are someone that matches their fly you know you 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 have the same frequency and vibration that matches theirs this is someone that definitely feels you're down to earth or you're nurturing or you're caring or you're a healer or you just have emotional intelligence this person wants to speak to you it says ask for what you need that's why this ace of uh king of swords is here so it's like in divine time and this person is going to do just that because they're realizing in order to heal this connection, they have to speak up. They have to say how they feel. With the 16, that's 7. That's the chariot. So now that they've gained this type of balance, because the earth is really about finding that internal, emotional, I should say, equilibrium. That's internal equilibrium balance and stability. Now they could start asking. Now they could start emoting. Now they could start expressing their feelings, their truth. Closed mouths don't get fed. So they realize that the more they hide their feelings, it's not doing nothing but hurting them. The more they deny their feelings, it's not doing nothing but hurting them. So they can sit here and play the game. All they're doing is hurting themselves in the process. So next it says, you are beauty in every fashion of the word, internal, external. That's why this justice, this Dr. Buzzard has a smile from ear to ear because they are completely come into this knowledge they've come into the absolute truth of how beautiful you are how regal how royal how wise how loving how happy you make them feel somebody's been trying to fight those feelings deny those feelings ignore those feelings suppress those feelings repress those feelings but now it's like there's no denying it you are beautiful. The divine feminine, that energy of the goddess, lady goddess, she is beautiful. There's no denying that. This person is now having the epiphany, the summer. This is the sun that shines within you. They're gaining the courage and the, you know, just that, that, uh, that courage and that, that strength, uh, the power to, to come toward you, to express these feelings, to say their truth. Because the justice is also about a truth coming out, you know, saying what you feel expressing what you feel they realize how beautiful you that you are they realize how beautiful the connection they have with you was and that's something they wish to recapture um they was stuck in this this uh lack mentality and a fear mindset um they was also being uh, manipulated psychically confused uh by this witch or this warlock that's been you know, doing these spells, this hoodoo, juju, voodoo, and it's like finally they've broken free from something because justice is here. Justice sets the record straight. Mama Ma'at has everyone's address, and so she's implementing karma, dharma. The seeds they've sown, they may have been bad in the past, but not as bad uh, as the, the karmic they're dealing with. So that's why I feel like there's a major breakthrough that's going to come in. It says you are uniquely made beautiful soul. So this is what this person is starting to realize. Like they have to first love themselves. You got to heal yourself in order to love yourself. And then when you love yourself, then you could go ahead and you could start knowing what the self needs, knowing what the self desires and requires. This is all about introspection reflection as they look at themselves and learn to start loving themselves because it's an inside job they also start applying that same lesson learned to all of the people in their lives this is why there's meditating here this is why there's a sense of you know gaining uh, a deeper understanding this is why there's that feeling of nostalgia because they're going back to those memory banks where you know, love where they felt love, where love was very significant. And so this person now is realizing like, you know, with this book of shadows, somebody's spells are wearing off because someone is really grounding themselves. When you ground yourself, it helps you to get back into your own body. 
you know, a lot of times we be having these out of body experiences, especially when you're on social media all day long, it disconnects you from real reality. You know what I'm saying? The real truth. And so I feel like somebody finally has some sort of epiphany and realizes like, damn, I got to change. I got to change for the better. And in making those changes, whatever these spells were, they're, they're, they're broken. The, the spell is broken. But someone starts to realize, you know, that they are um, they are drawn and attracted to you because you are unique. You know, they also realize and recognize this uniqueness within themselves. And so that is, you know, the 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 truth that they walk away from. I just realized my music wasn't playing the entire time. It's all good. Um, but yeah, just, I just turned it on like, oh snap, I haven't heard music the whole time, but it's all good. It's all good. We got to be healthy here. So now this person wants to be in a healthy relationship, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. They want a partner that's going to match their fly. They want a partner that is going to, you know, challenge them in the right way, compromise with them. That's going to grow with them. Forgiveness is here because I feel like this is absolutely someone from your past. That's six. The 96 reduces to 15. That's six. So that could be a lover, uh, someone that you know from a past life, a former life from this reality, just from the past that you've lost contact with. This could be a six of cups, someone from your past that chose another option and chose a karmic over you. Now they're returning singing, you know, not even singing this coulda, shoulda, wouldas. I don't want to be um, insensitive because I do feel like this person has gone through some sort of awakening, some startling metamorphosis, some transformation, and now they have seen the light. They see the light clear as day. And this is that person that's coming in um, very humbly, uh, asking for your protection. Uh, I mean, asking for your forgiveness, uh, and you're coming off very protected. Um, but they also know who you are and what this relationship means with be healthy i do feel that this person is coming to you um very honest very transparent uh and they're also coming to you with a very healthy um approach you know they're not coming in uh you know just talking because they have lips or being deceitful or deceptive or whatever they they're coming in very honest you know very humbly because i feel like this person has really been doing a lot of inter um in uh internal work a lot of healing you know they've been really you know and this is uh an energy that is in the womb of mother gaia you know so this is someone that's really been grounding themselves you know this is somebody that's really been doing the internal work so you know let's see what we got why let me get one more card for the 96 uh forgiveness which is cottage which is hat and astara so we have promotional uh a promotional pay increase um, that's a powerful energy. We just saw that in the shuffle. So there is some blessing, new beginning, new start, financial blessing. Some of you all have manifested some sort of new, um, opportunity here. And we have only calls with bad news. It's time to stop accepting those calls for you, uh, for your peace of mind. So this is what this person is starting to realize. Like, you know, some of their friend groups, some of the people that they have in their circle and their cipher, they need to start cutting them off because these are not people that reciprocate. Uh, it says, I want to get to know you better digging on you. So someone is realizing that they do want to get to know you better. They do want to connect with you. Uh, but they first have to let go of the past, release the ex, release the karmic, release the past so that the new can come in it says sacred space uh sacred space offerings honor your ancestors guides i was picking up earlier that some of you all were visiting like the ocean the pond the lake some of you all was going and grounding yourselves in a body of, uh you know in a grass or on a trail out in nature I do feel like there was a lot of time devoted to connecting, uh, to building that very strong bond and connection with your angels, with your ancestors, um, making offerings, pouring libation, um, giving food offerings to Mother Gaia after a blessings come through, after something you've prayed for manifested. That's a beautiful way to pay it forward, to pay it back. Um, it says he, she is the only, is the one that got away, can't shake this feeling. And I literally said that someone feels that way about you, or you may feel that way about someone, but this is what someone is really starting to realize is that they can't stop thinking about you. That's why this, you know, stuck in two minds is here because it's like they could be in a relationship, but then th yet their thoughts can tend to travel towards you and the thoughts that they 
are having are very fond, fond memories of love. This person is smiling. Every picture with a masculine seems to be like, you know, he's just cheesing. So this is the laughter. This is the joy. You make them feel even like in youthful. You know, you may give them butterflies. And look what else came out. I can't make this up. They love you to the moon and back. And so this is absolutely someone who's been hiding their feelings, hiding their emotions. They think about reuniting. They think about reconciling. They think about resuscitating and resurrecting this connection because I do feel like it ended suddenly. It ended abruptly and maybe even coldly, harshly. Uh, this person didn't appreciate you I was picking up on. But now there's the sense of this epiphany of who you are and what this connection means to them. So the cards that I was going to expound on that flew on the floor and these were all... Um, upright it says don't be complacent go out and get what you want what you desire so maybe this is what this person was doing because this is another it's a, it just sounds like this ask for what you need close mouths don't get fed so this could be that masculine who could who, they could have been very stubborn very like thinking things are supposed to chase them women are supposed to chase them they was the ish and um you know maybe you chose to choose yourself and you walked away from the situation and so now they're they're sitting back and and they're kind of like complacent because they're stuck in this loveless connection with this person that is obviously doing and love spells on them and they're just complacent unhappy uh frustrated stressed out aggravated and thinking of you and spirit is reminding them like don't be complacent you know and so what did i say y'all had a secret admirer so the secret admirer loves what they see so they are watching you from a distance from afar whatever you're doing this person absolutely sees just how sexful how, how successful you are how much you have grown um, you have literally morphed into someone completely different. It says you are so worth it and they will prove it to you. So this person feels that you are, in fact, hold on one moment, please. Pardon me for that. So this person is a secret admirer, definitely watching you from afar, and you are so worth it. And it says, um, and they will prove it to you. So they're going to come in very chivalrous, very charming. They're going to come in, like I said, they're not playing no games. They know exactly what they want, and it's you because they've had the time to analyze, to observe, to uh, self-analysis, to introspect, to reflect, to re revert back to when they met you and they may not have appreciated you. They, they're looking over all of that. It says emotional roller coaster ride, time to get off. This is what they're now on and this is why the completion card is here because they're getting out of this crazy, off this crazy train full with emotion. This is what they're realizing. Like, I got to get away from things that don't make any sense. You know, this book of shadows, all these secrets, not really being able to trust someone. It says, avoid the gossip circles. Whoever gossips to you, gossips about you. Know that. So this person definitely had a lot of people around them, chattering in their ear, giving a misadvice, misdirection, um, a miscommunication and that's why they're taking the time a pause to kind of go within you know this is internal reflections internal you know that's how I like to re refer to it and look at warrior spirit you defied the odds I literally said that in the beginning of the reading and look at this star shining star you are this person sees you as a shining star because you absolutely defied the odds that's I was talking about that when I picked up the four perseverance card it's like you were very resilient whatever it was that has happened it didn't happen to you it happened for you you know what I'm saying because it's like it's led you to you know start to um you know, transform and, and, and change into this, the, this goddess that knows their power. You, you fought through, you know, the thick of things. You got through a lot of these difficulties and um, it has made you who you are. That's why you're seen as very powerful. You know, this is a beautiful, beautiful reading, Scorpios. And the last card we have is drink more water, exercise, take a nature walk, jog, yoda, meditate, ground yourself. And it's very interesting because we have grounding which came out and then we also have incubation so this could be a message for you or your divine counterpart but this is how you are going to be able to get back into alignment with yourself is through grounding i take walks nature walks whether it's winter time or summertime and i take my shoes off and i literally walk on the earth so it's very important. That's a very powerful way that I ground myself. I even, my children do it. But um, 
it's a very beautiful way to connect with Mother Gaia and to transmute that energy, you know, to release whatever burdens. I tell you, whatever you are carrying energetically, whatever stress, whatever fear, whatever it is, I'm telling you, by the end of that walk, you'll feel so relieved, so rejuvenated. And it, it's like sometimes when you wear shoes, your feet can hurt on a nature walk. I take my shoes off and my feet never hurt. I don't have like the pain or the ache or it's like it just feels natural. So it's very important. The plastic or the rubber on the bottom of the shoes, it, it prevents you from having that connection to Mother Gaia. So it's very important to take your shoes off and walk the earth. Literally, when you take a nature walk, when you're out in nature, if you're in a grassy area, take your shoes off and just walk in the dirt. Walk. Feel that sand. Feel that, that the, 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 you know, get connected to Mother Gaia. So that's for some of you all out there, okay? But this is a beautiful reading on the bottom of the deck. We got stress, kill, destroy stress. So eliminate the stress in your life. Whatever's bringing stress, eliminate it. Some of y'all need to read more, pray more. Success is here again. So you're very abundant. We already saw you have uh, promotions, pay increase, lucrative business deals. Be thankful. So show gratitude. Give thanks. Like I said, if you just recently received some sort of promotion or you did some sort of spell work or manifestation rituals and you see the results, positive results of that, don't forget to pay it forward and go out and give offerings to Mother Gaia. You could give offerings by giving fruit to the trees, pouring water, libation to the trees, um, you know, but you, you could give seeds, you know, even putting seeds out for the birds to eat um, is a beautiful way. I always buy like big $10 bags of um, bird feed from Walmart, you know, just to feed the birds, like, you know, give them some nourishment, you know what I'm talking about? So, um, but yeah, so this is a beautiful reading, beloveds, and it says treat yourself, you deserve it. Treat yourself. You deserve it. So self-love is the best love. Treat yourselves. You absolutely deserve it. You're worth it. You've worked hard for it. So why not? Ashe. Uh, and be mindful that you got some jealous eyes, some jealous folks watching y'all, some jealous people that's super perturbed, super disturbed, and just protect your energy. You know, be mindful. Look alive. You got the power, so you already know. I feel like you're also very protective of your energy with the security. You have created boundaries, so... I don't have any doubt in my mind that you're already doing that. You're already doing your due diligence. But this was your reading, Scorpios. I thank you so much for tuning and tapping in. I send infinite love and light to you all. Power. I hope the message has resonated. If you are new, I hope you stay a while. If you're returning, beloved, you already know what it is. Love is love is love. Until next time, send a big fat ashe. Peace.